Hello Niagara on the Lake, Betty DeCero here. Today, December 3rd, 2020, is the second anniversary of this term of council. At the inaugural meeting two years ago, three themes were highlighted. First, creating a path for the future, a vision. Second, finishing unfinished business. And third, a sustainable budget. Creating a vision. When we started two years ago, Single lots were being converted to townhouses. Cannabis companies were lining up in the agriculture areas, and some of our woodlots were being clear-cut. Council immediately approved a pause. Then, we worked diligently with many members of the community to build a town vision for the future. We have approved the Economic Development Framework last December that recommends stimulating economic prosperity with purposeful, and intentional community growth. Council also approved a community wellness recommendations in January, recommending an inclusive, integrated, healthy town with mobility choices and a well-planned built environment. These reports complement our strategic plan that was approved in February of this year, with objectives to find innovative ways to protect our heritage, agriculture, and other assets that ensure our community remains distinctive and sustainable, to deliver smart, balanced growth, and to create a culture of customer service excellence with community input while having a positive workplace culture. These plans, along with tourism, transportation, irrigation master plans, to be, be completed this year, will guide the work of our administration going forward led by our new Chief Administrative Officer, Ms. Marnie Clucky. These objectives are evident in the decision Council has taken. First, on-demand transit system pilot now implemented to assist our citizens who live and work in certain areas of Niagara-on-the-Lake. The approval of the Niagara Nursery School expansion to assist with the growing numbers of young families in our community. Approval of the tapestry project on Hunter Road, an independent living community that inspires active aging. The Pathstone Mental Health Pilot Project to assist our youth. Parks improvements in Niagara-on-the-Green and Cannery Park, and additional tennis courts in Old Town, new pickleball courts, and the Virgil Skateboard Park designed to promote intergenerational movement. With respect to land use, Council took some bold steps that will allow for creative development while maintaining the look and built form of our unique community. As you know, our new official plan is still working its way through the region. In the meantime, we have amended our existing official plan to require compatible development in older established areas. We have approved the Glendale District Plan. We have approved some new commercial areas in St. David's and the Village. We have placed the heritage buildings in St. David's Centre on the town's heritage list. We have approved new mixed house housing stock within the municipality. And we have approved a budget for street enhancements in Glendale when, when the new diverging diamond is built. This contribution will create a gateway and finally join both sides of the highway in a proper, more prominent way bringing all of Niagara-on-the-Lake together. Finishing unfinished business. In order to do this, Council looked at the issues that were left behind to be completed. One of the first things Councils did was establish a tree bylaw. While the tree bylaw remains somewhat cumbersome, it is being adjusted to better serve the community. This year, Council adopted a bylaw, Demolition by Neglect, to protect designated properties from decay and will be used as a tool to stop the intentional deteriorating of heritage properties. Council adopted a zoning bylaw this summer to regulate cannabis growth and production. Council entered into an agreement with Honk Mobile to better manage metered parking and work on innovative ways to provide a fair and equitable system for our residents. Council completed a review of our service delivery. The new CAO and her staff 
will review the recommendations to improve efficiency while providing an even greater degree of transparency to our citizens. The town, through the Heritage Trail Committee, completed the first phase of the Heritage Trail improvements from John to Charlotte Street. Major shoreline protection work was completed at Balls or Bolton Beach. It was amazing. That will help ensure public access to water and stabilize the beach. After 20 years of discussion, Council approved an enhancement streetscape budget for Niagara Stone Road. These improvements expected to be done in 2022 will showcase the village of Virgil as a landmark in our town. With underground hydro lines, more trees, and space for walking and bicycles, this area will be more pedestrian friendly and inviting. It will bring Virgil streetscape into the future while still respecting our heritage in Virgil and celebrating those who came before us. And finally, Council made the decision to go out and look for what can be done to our old hospital. A request for expressions of interest will be going out soon. Lastly, a sustainable budget. The sustainable budget still eludes us. While COVID-19 pandemic made it even harder to achieve that, we must look at what mechanisms to put in place today so as our economy recovers, we can achieve a sustainable budget going forward. We will need to make tough decisions, even if they are not popular. Our goal is to create a sustainable framework or model that includes new revenue, cost efficiencies, and better prioritizing of our objectives to take us through the next decade without a major tax increase to our residents and businesses year after year. Council must be cognizant that we only have two more budget cycles left to start this. 2020 has been a very tough year and I want to thank all our citizens for their vigilance. We have worked together to make our way through this pandemic. It has been tough on our businesses and we continue to ask residents to shop local to keep everyone afloat. Restaurants, wineries and retailers all need our help. Throughout the pandemic, our staff have done an incredible job to keep our citizens safe, healthy and informed without a major deficit for 2020. So now let's look at the upcoming year. Here are some of the items on my own list. We must continue to support Pleasant Manor with their proposed expansion for long-term care facilities to support our aging population. We must come to a res resolution on the medical center. Our doctors need a home and it must be in Niagara-on-the-Lake. We must ask the town's historian to reaffirm and establish a complete properties list to be on the list to safeguard our heritage properties. We must complete our review of short-term rental bylaw and come up with protections for our neighborhoods, but also make it workable for the industry. We need to advocate for rural education model for our high school so our youth are not bussed out every day to learn. We need to provide incentives like Development Charge Deferral Program for industrial and diversified housing project developments. If successful, we need to look at expanding the on-demand transit system to all communities. And if possible, we must reopen Niagara Shores Park to relieve some of the pressures on our neighborhood parks. Our current CAO, Mr. Sheldon Randall, has been working very hard to make this a reality. I'm sure members of Council also have their own to-do list and I welcome a conversation and discussion about them. Council could not have achieved all of this without the support and commitment from our staff. Our senior management team and our emergency co control group, many of whom are the same people, worked with us on our priorities. They did their own day-to-day -day work and continue to help us and the town with the COVID pandemic. I believe we owe 
a great deal of gratitude to them. I want to close by thanking everyone who worked with the town on committees, in public outreach sessions, and delegations who helped Council through their deliberations. We are one community united. Thank you.